Okay, here's our plan for today. I think you'll find this pretty easy. The first half of this course is easy, meaning if you don't do get, get a good grade in the first part, uh, you're going to have to really try harder on the second part because the second half is Excel and then this mysterious thing called Access. PowerPoint is more like, let's just have some fun. Yeah. So make sure you go, as you have the fun, learn these objectives. We're going to create a blank presentation. No problem. Choosing a theme. Don't have to be doing all the coloring on your own. Let the theme do the work for you. Title slide is something you should always start your presentation with. And power, that's one thing about PowerPoint. It kind of helps you organize your thoughts to present. Changing the layouts with different kinds of slides. Various fonts and colors, very much like Word. Oh, very much like Word italics if we're controlling the font. Bringing in those pictures, because it's all about eye candy with PowerPoint, right? Not just boring texts. Lots of effects, resizing pictures. We're going to do a little bit more with that. We've done some with Microsoft Word. Arranging our slides, adjusting the colors, and entering slide notes. Okay, let's get started with a basic PowerPoint. It's going to look something like this. This is the slides that we're going to be creating. It's going to look something like this. On power, we're going to start PowerPoint, and we're going to do. A, we're going to start with a blank PowerPoint, but we're going to have all these things in here about hospital. A, a pet hospital. We're going to be creating a presentation for a pet hospital. So we're going to start with a blank presentation. We have some pictures supplied in our data files that we'll be going to get when we get the images. All right. Tell us so as to, to start PowerPoint. We find the Windows button or the click on the Windows icon and start typing pet power. I'll do it on this side so you see. So power, you start typing power. Once you see it highlighted, you don't have to click on it. You can just hit enter, and it will start that app. We're going to start with a blank presentation. But notice there are templates available there. As you get more adventurous, you're welcome to start with with templates. And I think, I think on the final, I actually have you use a template and put some things in there. Okay, blank presentation. And as we browse through the basic pieces on the page for PowerPoint, how many of you have not done PowerPoint? Which I'm not surprised. I expected you have great experience with PowerPoint. So again, to make this easy for you, just make sure, since you've done it before, this is your, this is your, uh, the downfall of those that know something. You think you know everything, so you don't pay attention to the new stuff, and then you miss out on it. That's that's what happens when you've grown up with the technology and you've played all the games. When something comes along that you you are familiar with, it's easy to forget and gloss over those things that maybe you've never used before but are there. So as I'm going, if you find things that are easy, don't just sit back and get on your phone and text your friends, but start exploring the things that you haven't seen before. Use this class as a way to say, okay, I'm going to get better at PowerPoint, even though I think I know everything that they're teaching. Get better at it by digging into all these menus. And go wild in your creativity, encouraging that. So in the title, we're going to put our title. We're going to start by just putting in plain text, and then we'll be editing things. And we'll learn about the, the ribbons along the way. We'll be learning about the dialogues as we go. Okay, so now we're here to our title slide. I'm skipping over a lot of explaining the ribbons because I think you know, and and as you explore, just click on the tabs to get the different ribbons, and the titles there will be familiar enough. We're going to play on the home ribbon. We'll be bringing in other things along the way. This is our placeholder. Oh, we're going to pick a theme first. Even though I could have, I could have picked a, pre, a a template at the start. I want to start with blank, but now I'm going to add a theme in the design tab. 
Now this one, although there are many available, let's pick the one that the book gives us. As we do further PowerPoints, I'll give you more flexibility. But let's explore the capabilities of this theme. Let's see if I get the right one here. So now it's showing up on the same place. I think it's this one, Wisp. No, no, it's Parcel. There it is, Parcel. Parcel and Wisp kind of look similar. Parcel looks a little less exciting than Wisp. Okay, so we're clicking Parcel. And you probably know this already, but as you have actually created a PowerPoint, you can always come back and change the theme anytime you like. The problem is, if you have positioned things to, ha to deal with the theme you have, and you go change the theme, you have to go back through and make sure changing the theme hasn't messed up the locations of all the things you spent time on. So it's best to pick your theme at the start, although it does let you change it, it's best to pick it at the start. And as we pick a theme, we can also choose the color to go with it. But I think we're sticking with the color that it came with, just to make sure here. And we apply the parcel theme, and it looks like we're not adjusting the color. Although, with every theme, there comes a color variation available. We're going we're gonna to stick with the variant, the plain variant. How do you change the color? You would just click on that, and it, get, uh, and it puts in that color variant. Okay. All right, now we have this. Now it's given the title in the format that went with the theme. And remember, themes include fonts background colors there's a, a slide master we're going to learn how to use that the book doesn't spend enough time on i'm going to make sure we spend some time in the slide master to give you way more power in powerpoint okay so the title is shelly pet hospital and wellness center oh they use the ampersand Even though I am not typing it in uppercase, it is putting it in uppercase because that is the particular font is all uppercase. And just like Word, I believe if we spell something wrong, it doesn't do red squigglies. Oh, it didn't do me red squigglies. Oh, it did an autocorrect. Did you see that? I hit space after it misspelling. It did an autocorrect. I believe if you do spell it wrong, let me try to spell something wrong here and see if it gives me red squigglies. There we go. Might take it a while sometimes. Control Z to undo my misspelling. And this one has a subtitle. We're putting in the subtitle Quality Care for Pets and Their Families. This one is uh, case, upper and lower case. And let's see if I can zoom in here for you and make a nice readable on the screen. Get that zoom button visible to everybody. Oh, it's hiding way down there. Yeah. There is a zoom button. The control roll of the mouse does let you zoom in. I can adjust the navigation to make it smaller over here. Give me more room on this screen. And there is a little known fact. There is a notes page hiding right under here. If I grab the bottom, I can pull up notes that can go to the slides. So I can add speaker notes to every slide that in certain cases, if I have two screens, I can actually see the notes and I can even have them printed out when do a special printout. But that's hiding underneath there. If I want to show them, I can click to show notes and it'll pop them open a little tiny bit for me. Most of the time you never see notes, but occasionally it's good to have them. All right, so I can zoom in and out to make it a little more visible. I'm not sh I'm not very happy with the quality of the slide. What do you think I'm not happy with? If I play this, I hit F5 to actually present, or this little pull down the slideshow there. What do you think is wrong with my slide? Boring. Kind of boring colors, that's correct. Can you read it, Matt? Em Emmanuel, can you read it? It's a little hard to read, though, to me. If I don't have my glasses on, I can't read that bottom part. No, oh, just barely. That's horribly small font. Most most presentations, you have to think about those old people in the back of the room. 
and they're not always old people. People that uh, don't see that well, but have decent vision, that quality care is really way too tiny. It's recommended for most, if most people talk about good quality PowerPoint, you make your font large enough so you can have a, at most probably about 10 lines of text on the PowerPoint. Anything smaller and some of your audience isn't able to read it. And of course, then your message isn't going to get across. Your very important message. We are going to adjust that paragraph by selecting the subtitle. I think triple click works. Let's try it. Triple click. And I can enlarge that or italicize it using Control I or the pop up menu italic. Let's see. Right click menu also brings up that. Or Control I. Let's see if I hover over it. Does it show me that's a Control I? Yes. If I hover long enough, it pops up the hey, Control I could have done this. Still too small. But now we're going to change it. We're going to decrease that from 20 to 32 points. My favorite way to enlarge the size is Control Shift greater than, and it still works. Problem is I don't see the size that it is unless I have the Home tab visible. Then I'll see the size that it's changing to. And now I see it's going up to 32. 32 is what we'd like. Notice if we make it bigger, it auto fits inside of that box. If I make this box, the, the placeholder larger, it will allow my text to, to stretch horizontally. Now we're going to format a particular word. We're going to change the text color of quality to be bright green. So double click quality and text color right here, the little letter A underline. And remember, this time we're not going to choose a theme color. We're going to choose a standard color, which means if I change my theme, it's always going to stay green because I'm choosing a color that has a specific setting, won't change with my change of theme colors. And we are going to change the theme later on. So it's not going to be boring the whole time. We're starting boring. We're going to make it exciting later. So now if I italicize, what's that? Yeah, just the one word, change the quality. And I can zoom out and in and out so I can see how the whole slide will appear. If I ever want to present it, the F5 button starts a presentation. But they remind us now that we need to save our file as we proceed to work on it. Control S or click on the upper left little old school disk, diskette icon. And because this is the first time saving it, it wants to ask me where to put it. Be sure to browse to your location. If you're on someone, if someone else is still logged in on their OneDrive, do not put it on their OneDrive, or it for, forever will be uh, unavailable to you if they sign out. I'm saving it in my CS101 Spring 2020, and I'm going to put my name in the front of it. You can leave the Shelly Pet Hospital in there if you'd like. I'm putting Manning. W, not WD, PPT1. And you can have anything after that. As long as it starts with your last name, PPT1, designating this is PowerPoint project number one. I'm saving it in a special place that I know how to get to when I'm ready to upload it to Schoolology. If you have a flash drive, you could save it to your flash drive that should show up under there. Let's see, I have one in my pocket right now. Let's see if my flash drive shows up. Take my flash drive. Plug it in. Wait a second. And there's my flash drive shows up. I could be saving this right to my flash drive. So then when I leave this room, it is not left for someone to erase it accidentally or to copy my secret message. But since I might lose my flash drive, I'm going to save it on my hard drive there in my CS101 folder. And click Save. PowerPoint remembers my recent files, and I can continue. Now we're adding a new slide after this underneath the new slide button on the home page. If I hover over that, I will see that new slide also 
Control M will produce a new slide. This also works in Google Slides. How many of you have used Google Slides? Yes. Yep. So I could click here, or I could Control M, and now I have a new slide. Notice it's not giving me another title slide. PowerPoint automatically wants to give me a slide with this standard layout. A what do they call this? This layout is this is title and content layout. And you can see the various layouts available to you. I'm going to put in a title for this one. The title is going to be Our Services. It's all uppercase regardless of how I type because that font is a stick-on uppercase font. And one thing that's slightly confusing, notice where my place, where my insertion point is there. My insertion point is in the text right now. If I click on the very edge of my placeholder, notice the, the insertion point vertical line stops blinking. That means my text box is selected and I can move it around or adjust its size or delete it. If I'm inside the text editing, when I delete, it's deleting letters in my text. So keep in mind, if I click the very edge of any placeholder, that allows me to manipulate that placeholder. And now in the bulleted list, it's already bulleted for us. I can just start typing the various things that are going to be available in our laboratory. And it's going to look something like this. Start typing emergency care. And I'm going to zoom in here for you. I'm in a bulleted list, and bulleted lists are special. If I hit tab right now, it will indent that one level deep into my bulleted list. And that's also shown up here in my paragraph. I can do indenting there as well. And I'm going to type now x-rays and laboratory testing. Hit enter. Now I want it to be a main point. I can hover over this or uh, to decrease indent level or shift tab will also do it. And it's, sadly, it doesn't show shift tab as the key that will do that. I don't know why. Shift tab takes it out a level. And I will continue preventative care. And underneath the preventative care, I have multiple things listed. Hitting tab again takes me in a level routine checkings, checkups, and vaccination. And I want one more uh, indent level, tab, in and one third, third, of dogs and cats. Are overweight. Fat cats. Too many fat cats. And we'll check up and put them on the treadmill. Fat cats make good eating. Yeah. Everybody loves cats. Some to for, as pets and some as dinner. I'm the more I love cats as dinner. Type. I'm not anti-cat. They are delicious. Now this text, what are we going to do? We want this text to be selected and we're going to do something to this text. We're going to bold the routine checkups. Control B. Bold the routine checkups. Or the little B there under the home tab will do the same. And we're also going to increase the size of some words. Oh, in the textbook, they, they misspelled vaccinations. 
think you're getting used to the spell check and fixing them when you see that. Uh, we want routine checkups to be increased to 18 point. Control shift greater than, or this little guy here will increase the font size. And we're going to underline what, some text. One third. We're going to underline one third. Let's see if a will a double click select between the dashes. Let's find out. Double click. Yes, it did select. Treated the hyphen as part of the word. And now I underline that using that or Control U shows up. Boy, have we got an exciting slide so far. Now we're going to be putting in a new slide. After this one's done, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I see those two slides. I want a new one. Now, if I just click here once, it'll give me a new title and content. If I click on the little arrowy guy underneath him, he'll give me the choice of what title, type of new slide layout I want to insert. So I could immediately click to content. And I have, well, I should have a slide with two content. Why do I have this extra? There it is, slide with two content. I was zoomed so far and I didn't realize. There is my slide with two columns of content. If I decide I didn't like that, I can always switch back by changing the layout here and then change my mind. Wait a minute, I do want slide with two content. You can always change your content. It doesn't er usually doesn't erase it if you have it there and then change the layout. And this one is obedience classes. They keep misspelling in the textbook for some reason. I think. And now we're going to fill in our titles for our two placeholders there, basic and advanced skills. And if I hit tab, where does it take me? It doesn't take me to the, the next item. I have to click on the next item here. Small group sizes. Uh-oh, I've got a problem. It's not showing up the same as in the book. I did something wrong. I did something wrong. I have the wrong slide format. Let's fix it. Let's see if I can fix it. Layout. It's the second comparison one. Sorry. Let's see. Let's see if it breaks it. Oh, it put it left. The, I was hoping it would move this up to the to the title. I'm going to cl click and drag that up and see if it puts it. Yeah, I did the wrong slide format. Do the comparison, and then I selected and dragged up the text into the title of that side. Since I already had it in the bulleted, it didn't it didn't guess that I wanted that to be my title. It left it in bullets. But now we have it in the right place. I was going too fast and not paying attention to the location. I think I need to get rid of this extra line. I'm going to backspace so I don't have that extra line in there. And I think, do I have, oh, I don't see formatting marks in PowerPoint like we had in Word. It was hard to tell that I had left an extra line in there. Now I'm ready to do the bulleted list. Oh, but no, they want us to change the font in the small group sizes. Triple click. They want us to choose a different font here. Let's see what font they want us to choose. The Cambria. So I have that selected. Choose instead of the default. Now Cambria isn't showing up here in my theme fonts, but I can slide down to the C's and there it is. I don't think it looks that much better, but they like the Cambria better for that one. And I would think we'd want both of them to be Cambria. It's, it looks pretty bad to have one Cambria and not the other. Let's see how they did it. Yeah. 
small group sizes. I'm going to make sure both of them are Cambria. Now the easiest way is just to select this one, use the painter right there, and then come over and paint over the other text. It will take the same font. Or if you don't remember how to use the paintbrush, just select this line, triple click, and change the font there to Cambria. And because you've recently used it, Cambria now shows up at the top. And now I have that set up as Cambria. So Cambria, it looks like they don't have us change the font size. It's at 19. And now we're ready to select a slide. That's We're going to have pictures on this slide. So we select another slide that is simply title only. Cambria. You good? OK. Now we'll come back later to fill in these little comparison boxes with pictures and things. New slide, not a change the layout, but a new slide. This time it's title only. Add another slide that's just title only. And we'll come back later and add some pictures. And the title is going to be Grooming Facilities. Filling our placeholder. Now at this point, we're realizing this is a horribly boring theme. But we've used it for a while. We haven't followed my recommendation of choosing the theme at the start because it can mess you up later. But we can come back and change the theme. Now it's time to get it more exciting. I'm going to do a control S before I make the major change in my theme. Make sure it's saved what I have. And now go to the design tab and let's choose this much more exciting theme. Down here, the integral theme. That's way more exciting. Doesn't look that the the first pet title the first slide looks exciting the rest of them pretty boring. But let's choose integral and then eventually we are going to change the. Well, we're not changing the color variation on that yet. There's plenty of other more exciting themes, but let's play with the integral, and then maybe come back later and choose one of the other ones. But we'll go with integral and just explore how that works. We see that the integral theme has a lovely background on the title slide. We'll, come, we'll let you do that later. Let's work with integral for now. And then we'll change the theme. Because I want you to learn some things about themes. That they are actually a combination of slides and master slides. Lost his lip gloss. It's over here under a manual. On your on your left side. Don't share lip gloss, especially in the days of viruses. Okay, so we have that theme. We can select through our different slides. You know, it hasn't really gotten that much more exciting. It's actually seemed to have gotten a little more boring here, especially this. That font is way too small. But we'll go. We'll do what the book asks, and then we'll come back and make it even better. Now it's time to bring in some pictures. We're on that first slide, and we want to bring a picture of a of a pet our pet hospital person holding the some puppies in her arms. Now it's time to get a little practice at going to get those data files. Remember where those data files are. We haven't used them for a while, so it may be a little uh, fuzzy in your mind. Our data files are over there in Schoology. Let's find it. Over here under Schoology. Uh, there's our online companion. There's our researches page. Let's go to the online companion and see if we can find our data files for PowerPoint Project 1. Let's see if this takes us to the right place. Let's do an online companion. 
data files, a PDF file, if I click on it, it should do something. It's doing nothing for me. What's happening? Is your, is your PDF, are you able to see that PDF link? Let's try open link a new tab. There I get the PDF. I don't know why it didn't show up. There's the PDF. I did a right click on it and I did an open PDF, open a new tab. Now here's all the data files there. You see the one I want? I want the PowerPoint data modules 1 to 3. So I want to click on that PowerPoint data modules 1 to 3. And that's going to download as a zip file. And I'm going to store it in the place where I can find it. Yep, it looks like I'm in the right place here. Make sure I've got the right place. I'm going to store it in my little CS101 folder. It's got this crazy name, 97 blah blah blah, PPD intro modules. I'm going to go ahead and save that file. And now I want to browse to where those files are and extract them. And so PowerPoint can find the find the pictures. So I have to go to my downloads and in this browser the downloads are hiding down at the bottom of my browser window. Right down here in Chrome. I think yeah, I'm in Chrome. I'm going to go down to the bottom of my screen here and I show that little arrow there. I'm going to go show in folder. Click on that little arrow show in folder once I've downloaded it. And there's the file. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to try entering that file by opening it. Notice this this tab turns pink. That's showing me this is an archive and I want to extract all of these files. So I click on extract all and it's showing me that the files are going to be extracted to this location and I'm gonna go ahead and do extract. Now I have three more archive files that are inside of that archive. I have archive inside an archive. Reminding me of a movie. Everyone see Inception? Now that I have that zip file, I want to extract that one too. So I double click on that one. And I see it's got a folder that's going to have all my modules. I'm going to do a, a click and extract all there now. Are you able to download it there, Manny? Right click on the PowerPoint module threes. You got to download it. And then show files and you extracted everything. You've got to do the extraction or PowerPoint won't be able to find the files. PowerPoint doesn't know how to go look inside of these zip files. I have to extract. Now I can come back to PowerPoint and insert the pictures from a file. Another way to do it, if you didn't do the extraction, I can go down into the folder, PowerPoint 1, go into the, I believe it's the module folder, and I can drag that animal picture lady, puppy love, one. I think I could just drag that over to my PowerPoint. Let's see if that will work. Uh, where's PowerPoint? There's PowerPoint. Now let's go to that window that's showing me my files. I think I can just click and drag this. Let's see if it works. Click and drag. Yeah, it seems to work. And then it drags that lovely smiley lady with hoping, holding two lovely cute little puppies in her arms. And I can adjust then the position of that picture. Another way to bring in pictures, I'd say the drag and drop is probably the easiest way to bring in pictures into PowerPoint after it, after they're extracted. I think it will, PowerPoint actually may let you do it even without doing the extract all. It can drag and drop. But sometimes you want to be able to insert from PowerPoint. Unless you have it extracted, PowerPoint won't know how to do an insert picture and it, it won't be able to go find inside an extracted folder if it's not extracted from the folder. So insert picture doesn't work unless you've done the extraction. Drag and drop will most of the time work. I have seen sometimes where 
dragging a drop from inside an archive file sometimes has problems. But usually I've seen that work. And it seems that's the most obvious thing to do, is just browse into the file and drag it in. Okay, so that however you get that image in there, now we can place it on the screen in a lovely position. We don't want it to cover up the text. And on our services picture, we're going to drag in the butt dogs holding the stethoscope. So I go back to my pictures. This little dog's holding the stethoscopes. I'm going to drag that one into this slide, and they show up there. And I can adjust its position on the slide, just clicking and dragging. Grooming facilities, I'm going to come over here and drag it into the drag the dog being groomed into this slide. Here's the dog being groomed. I'm going to drag into this slide. And I can adjust its position. Now something special. You thought that was cool. Watch what I can do with this third slide that has placeholders for things. Watch what happens. I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if I could drag it and drop it into the placeholder. Let's see what happens. So this is the dog. This is this little guy shaking hands. Let me move this browser over. That I'm going to click and drag this onto that placeholder. And let's see if it works correctly. Look at that. It fits it within the placeholder because there was a placeholder there. With these, it just put it right over everything. If I drag into the placeholder, and now I'll get the other one, the group shot, I'm going to drag that into the placeholder. I have to make sure the placeholder is visible. Let me move this around here. I'm going to drag this picture here into this placeholder. And look how it fits it in there. Watch what happens if I didn't put it in the placeholder. I'll drag it just somewhere on the page. Oh, look at that. It still wants to put it in the placeholder. Huh. Maybe it just knows to put it in the placeholder, first placeholder it finds. Another way I could have done it is actually click on the placeholder, and then it will have me browse, but they have to be, have been extracted. And now I'm going to just, to make sure it works, I'm going to browse to where my files were extracted. There's the extracted files. Oh, look at that. PowerPoint can't find anything inside the extracted files because they hadn't been extracted. I had simply explored into it. So I'm going to drag. I thought I had done the extraction, but it's acting like they're not there. But I can drag that into there. Now I've got my images. This is bothering me that it didn't really extract. I thought I had extracted them. No, well, I'm not sure it has. Let me check with PowerPoint here, see if they did get, indeed get extracted. I'm going to do a, just for a test here, I'm going to undo and see if it'll let me browse. No, nope, look at that. It's not letting me see inside of that folder. Let me go back up a level. No. It's not letting me browse into that. I thought I had extracted them. So that's bothering me. Nope. So that extraction isn't as nice and friendly as I was hoping. So I'm going to redo that. Control Y. Now I have my images in my slides. Now it's time to just adjust them a little bit as they get to fit within my illustrations. So back to the first slide now. I want to adjust this picture, but if you click on the picture once and you just grab an edge, it can warp that picture horribly. And that poor girl is not going to be happy with you. Control Z to get back to the normal. But if I drag a corner, it tries to keep the proportion. Notice when I drag a corner, it keeps it proportional. 
If I want an exact size, I can click on the Format tab and see up here in the upper right the exact size that I could give to my picture. But I don't think they've given us an exact size, have they? They have approximately 5 inches by 7 or 8 inches. So I'm going to enlarge it. And if you also, as I grab it, notice how if I get to close to an edge, it'll snap to an edge and stop for a second. And kind of give us, hey, is that where you want it? If you want it to fit exactly that edge, I'm not sure it'll snap to the edge of that blue because that isn't the edge of our slide. But that doesn't look too bad, fitting it right to the edge of that. In the book, they say about 5 by 8, 7.8 or so. Not going to be fussy with that. If I wanted to center, let's see if a control E will center it. Nope. Let's try. Can I center it here? Size and position. Uh, there's not a center. Oh, let's try position. Center, horizontal position. If I do zero from center, see what it does. That's not doing what I expected. I thought that would, zero from center, I thought it would center me. That's the horizontal position. So I'm not sure how that's the centering controls work where are working very well. But I can adjust. Oh, look, it actually does snap to center. If I get to the center, see how the little, little red line appears? There's the exact center. I'll let you adjust that picture to your taste. And now go to the next one. This one, we want these little doggies. I like to make, actually, I think the font is way too small. Even though the book has given us this font, I want, I want this more readable. This is horribly tiny for anyone in the back row. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select it all. And this is another reason I like this control shift greater than. See how they're all large? The, all the text isn't the same size. But as I increase the size, it does increase everything a little bit at a time. It doesn't make them all the same size. Now as I adjust the little puppies, see how it's kind of blocking out some words and it has a red block around it? I can arrange and send that to the back. So now it won't block the text. And because this doggy has light hair, it doesn't make that text too hard to read. So it's not horrible to have that dog partially behind the text. This dog, though, would be horrible to have behind the text. It makes the text hard, hard, very hard to read. But a lighter colored, I don't have to have it all the way to the text. And this little white box extending beyond the edge of my slide doesn't matter because it's not going to appear when I display the slide. If you want them sitting at the bottom of the slide, that's fine. You can arrange your little doggies how you like. And you can resize them how you like. The what? Oh, under Arrange, on the format, click Arrange, Send to Back. Let's see if Right Click. I think Right Click lets you do a Send to Back as well. A nice effect when you have pictures that aren't too detailed. Make sure whenever you're doing this that you don't make the text hard to read. And as I look at this, I'm thinking, you know, if I could make them even larger if I if I flipped it horizontally. I'm going to I'm going to go to arrange rotate flip horizontal. And now I have more room. I think that's a little better arrangement. I'll let you decide if you want to flip them horizontal. Doing too much. Did you a save in between? You know, if you if you restart it, it'll probably recover where you were, close to where you were. Just start a PowerPoint. Is it not in the force to force to stop? You put all three. Right, you put all three.
Good practice for you. Yeah. You can put that as an extra slide in your PowerPoint. Okay, so we've got some slides with images. Pretty happy with them. And we're out of time. Having so much fun recovering PowerPoint files. I would make the I would still make this text larger, but that's I guess that's decently readable. This text is getting kind of small. And I'm going to